We are fifth and sixth class Skullwara from Elton, County Donegal. We have created this short movie documenting our adventures as we explore the River Lennon. We want to see if it functions as a nature corridor. The first thing we had to do was learn a bit about the nature that we would get on the Lennon. What lives in the river? What lives beside the river? What nature is best to have in the river banks for nature? What's the water like, as in, is it clean or dirty? So we started in the classroom. We learned about riparian habitats, what they are and why they are important. We learned how to test the water quality by looking at the types of bugs that live in the river. Some bugs, like the mayfly, need clean water. Some, like snails, like more polluted water. Some have fly, not June fly, stone fly, nice. We learned how to identify some trees that like to grow on riverbanks. Species like alder, willow, and some common ash. We looked at maps to figure out where we were going. We also looked at what pressures come on the river from humans. The next day we all piled on the bus with all our equipment. Everyone was well dressed with waterproof gear and wellies. Important as the rain was forecast, no surprise. Told ya. We had picked out three different sites to visit. The first one being Glendowen, where the river catchment starts. Second one was downstream from Garten where the Lennon is wide. The last site we explored was downstream of a town called Kilmacrennan. to the first site, Glendon, we split into three groups. One group went with Patsy, a scientist from the local authorities' water program. Patsy taught us how to kick sample. That's where we used nets to catch bugs that live under the stones in a river. We then empty the nets into a tray of water and use special charts to figure out which species we have found. We recorded the different types of species and we would use this later to figure out if the river water is clean or not. Before we started our kick samples, we used a big periscope viewer to check if there were any fresh water power muzzles. These are Ireland's oldest animals and wouldn't like us stamping on them, even by accident. The second group looked at riparian habitat. We measured a 20 metre strip along the length of the river and marked it out with little tiny red flags. Then we recorded how many trees and bushes there were in 20 metres. We wrote down the species of trees that we found. We would use these records later to compare the different habitats at each site. Species along the way there. We will be in another few minutes here, so. Can I ask you at the back, please? I want somebody to identify this one. Someone at the back, please. The last group looked for bugs in the bushes and trees along the riverside. We used special nets called sweep nets. These nets are really tough and can be dragged through vegetation to catch bugs hiding in there. We also shake the bushes over white trays. 
This way, any bugs left behind would fall into the trays and be easy to see. We recorded the numbers and types of bugs we find. E is H. Yeah. By the time we got to the second site, the rain had stopped. This time, each group did one of the tasks that they hadn't already done. So a different group went into the river with Patsy to look at the bugs under the stones and what so on. Each time we got to the river, we had to be careful to disinfect our boots and the gear we were using. This way we made sure we were not going to carry any invasive species or bugs from site to site. Mayfly just there, that's this guy here, that's brilliant guys. And see the two it's kind of wide. That frilly stuff on the sides, that's its gills. The bug group found loads of spiders and a frog at this site. The second site had an old ruined cottage and an old mill run. It showed us that people have been using this river for a very long time. We also had lunch there too. We then got back on the bus and headed to the third and last site. Same as the last two sites, the three groups changed jobs. One group in the river, one group looking at vegetation, and one group sweeping for bugs on the riverbank. So as a wildlife corridor, the riparian habitat was very different. That was quite nice. So now we're going to go into this site, so it worked really hard. At this site we found a plant called Himalayan balsam. This is an invasive species. There was not much riparian habitat here, so the plant group this time pulled up the balsam before it got to spread its seeds. Very different kinds of bugs were found in our kick sampling at the third site. This site was downstream from a town which might have affected the water quality. Oh, 
What's that thing? Oh, yes, there's a shredder. Shred. Oh, you've got a few things oh, in look, here. What's look, what's that? Got a caddisfly. That's, that's, is that a good or a medium? That's, that's, that's medium. Oh. Oh, another one. Nice. Oh, we got a lot of stuff in that time. We did. That's a good spot for it. That's another yeah. freshwater shrimp. It's very, <laughs> yeah, there's like five freshwater shrimp. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Everybody was happy but tired when we headed home after the third cycle. The next day we collected all the information we had found and our teacher helped us put it down in a table on the whiteboard. That way we could compare the water quality at each site. We were then able to see how the water quality changed as we moved down river. If there is lots of vegetation, making a home for lots of bugs, then there is food for birds and other animals. This vegetation also helps hold the bank together and helps to filter water coming from fields and roads. So, the more vegetation, the happier and healthier the river will be. What we found was, the more vegetation there was, the more biodiversity there was. Biodiversity just means different living things. The more trees there are, the better for the planet. Trees can capture carbon from the sky and store it in their trunks. So the more trees, the more they help cool down the world. Important with our changing climate. And riverbanks are the perfect place for this type of planting. The Lennon is a nature corridor. We found that the places that had more plants supported more life. And as the Lennon moved from high in the mountains, through valleys, fields and towns, the river banks can act as a place for plants and animals to thrive. Unfortunately, not everywhere had diverse riparian habitat. In other words, lots of trees and shrubs. If we planted more trees, we would have a nice corridor for nature to move up and down the Lennon through all those valleys, fields and towns. So, the more trees and shrubs, the more they hold the riverbanks together, support more life, cleaning and filtering the water, helping to slow down the water when it rains a lot, so, help prevent flooding, and capture carbon, so they help the whole planet. Thanks to Patsy from the Local Authority Water Programme, Noel from Antashka, Charlie for his film work, and Angus from Nature Northwest. A special thank you to our teachers, Mr. McElwain and Tina, for taking us on this project. Catchment is the River Lennon which begins at the Dairy by Mountains through to Garton Lake to Kilmacrannan to Loch Fern and then out to Remilton. A riparian habitat is a habitat that is lakeside or riverside and it has like trees and shrubs and that. 
and its surroundings is like trees and shrubs and all that. Riparian habitat is a vegetation beside a lake or river. Site one, the water quality was good, uh, and then at site two, it was like at the good side of moderate, and then site three was the good side of moderate. But uh, like site one was probably the best water, probably the cleanest, the best quality water, and site three was probably the worst quality water. What Himalayan balsam does, it grows roots and it kills off all the other plants in that area and then dies in the winter. And if all the other plants are dead, then it's just going to destroy the whole riverbank. The riverbank's going to get destroyed because it might flood during the winter. And if there's nothing holding it together, then it's going to just collapse. And you go down to the deepest part that you can hold and you pull it out and then you snap the roots off and set them up on a fence or something so they can't grow again. You could plant more native trees like willow, hazel or alder and protect them by putting a fence around them from livestock. Uh, we could improve the water quality by being careful of what we put in the sink because it all ends up in the lining. We could help people improve the lining by fundraising about or like setting up a 5k um, and raise money to plant more trees and shrubs and then get the farmers to do it. We could put up some bird boxes and bat boxes and then we'll give us home for animals. We should have trees all the way down the lane to stop to slow down the water to stop flooding. Mm. Yeah. Because and to it suck up if oil spills to suck yeah. some of it up and to keep shelter for fish in the sun. Um, we could also plant more different types of trees so that it could attract more bugs. Insects come. And fencing it off from livestock. And stuff. So if you have some amount of feeling there's a riparian habitat there, don't just go and cut it all down and stuff because you're basically damaging your field when you think you're improving it because the riparian habitat holds your field together and if you cut down your riparian habitat like when a flood comes or anything like that it's more likely to have a flood and when, it, when a flood does come all the muck and stuff will break away and it'll just be like a big pit. Well some farmers think if they get rid of more trees they'll get more space but they're actually making their field worse because trees normally suck water that's how to stay alive. And whenever they got the trees away, they'll start the ditches will start flooding up because the trees aren't sucking the water. Because when you cut the trees away, the trees is taking up forty eight percent water, I think, and fifty three percent's going away again. Or is that right? So yeah, and really? then so if you cut them away, the a hundred percent then will be going into the stuff and I'll make it a lot worse and cause more flooding and stuff. Save the river because it helped us survive and the riparian habitat because it helps wildlife survive. It's my Lenin, it's our Lenin, it's the community's Lenin. We have to help protect it. And help us save the river Lenin! Hey, well done guys, well done. It's kind of a Give yourself a round of applause, give yourself a round of applause.